Today's episode is brought to you by the Pottawatomie Sportsbook. It's happening. The Pottawatomie Sportsbook is officially open. Bet on all your favorite sports, games, and players using our self-service sports betting kiosk. All bets must be made on site. Visit the Pottawatomie Sportsbook website for more information. Bet big, bet bold. to the NKE Sports Express, the best sports podcast in Milwaukee. And now for your hosts, Tyler Klein and Liam Hanley. All righty, thanks so much for joining us. We are back this week with the NKE Sports Express. We have a special guest today, Dalton. Say what's up. How's it going? We have Liam. Hello, as always. We have me, yours truly, Tyler. We are going to get into some good stuff today. We had some awesome, awesome, awesome stuff come out of the draft. Um, the, the, the NBA, NBA draft. draft, yes. We had some great stuff for uh, MLB. We're going we're gonna to talk about some of our all-time lineups. Mm-hmm. Um, it's going to be a great episode. I'm excited for it. Well, we got to start off talking about the awesome thing that happened that involved the three of us a couple weeks ago, the Wiffle Ball opening day. <laughs> oh, Dalton yeah. and his right. brother ended up coming. It was fun. It was an awesome time. Yeah. Is it your um, brother or is it your friend? Oh, no, it was my brother. Okay, I didn't know that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, not going to lie, I pulled my shoulder so bad. Yeah, okay, so explain, <laughs> explain to me what you did. Because I, I remember did, that. I mean, am I getting old? I need a stretch, I guess. Yeah. But I was thinking well, about it. You, you know, when, it? You know you when you're little, before baseball games and everything, you stretch a ton, like mm-hmm. 20 yeah. minutes, oh, 30 minutes. Yeah. Me and Liam, like, at least 20 minutes. Oh, it's like no. close, cl- closer to, like, 45 minutes warm-up before we play, I would say. Yeah, for you. Yeah. Not for me. Well, I was tra- um, I was trying to bomb that. I, I know, and you were doing it so with, hard. Were you doing it with one hand? Uh, yeah, one I did a one arm <laughs> one, and yeah, your, I, you pulled, I pulled, pulled it. I was like, oh man. Oh, while swinging. <laughs> yeah. oh. <laughs> I have to warm up a ton. It's funny because I've been the last four weeks. I've been getting back into running, and I've been running consistently, which is awesome. But it's like, dude, you have to warm up. Otherwise, yeah. you're just like screwed oh, if you, yeah. if you ter- terrible and then you get it like chance of getting hurt or so much higher yeah mm-hmm. i think it's more important to stretch after the run than it is before mm-hmm. honest to god a lot of people yeah will run i think a mile b- before you, a lot you of do, people will run yeah. a mile then warm up do the stretching it's incredibly important you got to do you got to do dynamic stretching yeah, then exactly. static yeah you do dynamic warm up and then more of a kind of a, a static stretch after you <laughs> that's, yeah. that's what i just said <laughs> well i was gonna say you were okay <laughs> so yes yes yeah. the, the warm up confirming it. yes the warm-ups are important the warm-ups and the warm downs are important yeah. so we're gonna get into some awesome stuff here the first things first we're gonna talk about the man the myth the legend jack golke lee what do you have with that yeah jack golke had a workout <clears throat> excuse me with the bucks uh he was the seventh the seventh team he worked out with um he's probably not gonna be drafted but he's a really strong candidate to be in, in the summer in the summer league is like an undrafted free agent can he be signed as an undrafted free agent yes that's yeah. how it works mm-hmm. yeah so i mean he'd have to kind of prove himself in summer league and then he probably—I I, I doubt he would make like the opening day roster, but he would end up, you know, like in the in the G League, like yeah, the, the he'll del- get a, developmental um, league, training camp deal maybe yeah. somewhere. Um, but yeah, he's a he's a good three point shooter. Yeah, so, someone will pick him up. Yeah, I you saw. Think, I, you think that a team will pick him up? For sure. See how so summer cool. league goes, I guess. Do you know how cool that is. The Jack Golke like mm-hmm. was like literally a nobody. Yeah, <laughs> that's so cool how that works. You want to know something funny? He only shot. 
eight two pointers yeah. all season last yeah. season. Yeah, yeah. Liam, Liam actually had that point a couple months ago, and <laughs> when he told me, I couldn't believe it. I was yeah. like, "Damn!" <laughs> I don't know. I don't know if I saw him take a two pointer in a game while I was watching. <laughs> yeah, I think he was only. I mean, because I feel like you can anybody can like run up and be physical, but I I feel like the real talent there is like yeah. shooting threes. That's hard, man. Well, he, yeah, even some shooters will like do a mid-range jumper every now yeah. and then. You, know, you, you so. got to keep the defense honest yeah. a little yeah. bit. Like, you know, you pump <laughs> fake, drive the hoop. Yeah. But, I mean... So hopefully he improves yeah. on that a little bit, and I think he can be maybe yeah. a, yeah. a well, rotational... I mean, yeah, but before he went to Oakland, you know, he spent one year there, but when he was in D2, he was, you know, inside-out player. Mm-hmm. So he was scoring the inside as well. So it's just... It's more what do you mean inside-out player? It's more just... Uh, he scored in, inside the arc as well, you know, in okay. the paint at the rim. And it's it more just his role at Oakland, you know. Mm-hmm, the system there. Nice. Well, what else do we have? Uh, yeah, we got more more college basketball news. Uh, another signing for uh, UWM. Uh, Asaya Pippa White joins the joins the program. He's a six two guard. Uh, averaged ten point one points per game, two rebounds per game, and one point nine assists per game at Odessa College. Uh, helped lead the team to a twenty six and nine record. Uh, he was a twenty twenty four. Uh, and took to help take the team to the NJCAA Division One Men's Basketball Championship quarterfinal. So that's JUCO. Uh, he was the Western Junior College Athletic Conference Freshman of the Year. Uh, and has three years of eligibility remaining. So I mean, he was the conference he's playing in was really it's, it's a high level conference in, ter- in terms of JUCO. It's like playing. Like, I feel you know, like those JUCO boys yeah. go in. It's, 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 it's like playing ridiculous. like it's like playing like the Big yeah. Twelve of JUCO. I mean, a lot of talented guys come out of the conference. I mean, he, he's Freshman of the Year. I think he can you know, provide a big boost for, for Milwaukee. Nice. Well, we have some awesome news, too. Dallas Keuchel, which is somebody that I've always wanted to see play for Milwaukee. This guy is great. He's a very good arm the last couple of years. Um, yeah, the, the guy is great, too. I mean, the, guy is, <laughs> the, guy, the guy still has it. So he, he, he's, of course, from the Mariners for cash considerations. So you can tell us some more about that. Yeah, so, I mean, he was, he was playing in AAA for the Mariners uh, this year. He had a 3.93 in ERA. In How the, old is he? The 36? Well, let's, let's, let's look it up. He's not only, I mean, he's Dallas Keiko. Where is he? What was he on the? He is 30, he's 36. Red Sox? No, he was, so he was on the Astros. So he was, that's after Astros, that. So, yes. So he was, his, his best years came with the Astros. He was the, the 2015 AL Cy Young winner. Oh so it's, it's been a long Holy time. Cow, man. Since Almost 10 years. That's insane. <laughs> that's a long time. That is insane. So, I mean, he was, you know, yeah. Two-time All-Star, yeah, 2017, 2017 uh, World Series winner, five Gold Gloves. Uh, spent 2019 with the Braves. 2020 is really his last good year. He spent that at the White Sox. Uh, so the, the COVID year, he had 11 starts, 1.99 ERA, uh, fifth in the Cy Young voting that year. But That's insane. Really has not performed well since. Uh, he's, you know, he signed. His last year at the White Sox was a failure. You know, spent time with the, the Diamondbacks, with the Rangers, with the Twins. Last year he was with the Twins. Pitched 37.2 innings, had a 5.97 ERA. So that's it's, terrible. Guys, oh my god, it's really fallen off. So yeah, so, since right, that, since that, good. I thought he still yeah. was. Oh my god, what was since, I since that COVID year, 6.29 <laughs> ERA and 260 innings. Uh, but no, he, he's he's kind of figuring out at AAA at a 1.61 ERA over his last five starts there. Uh, he's a contact-heavy pitcher. His ground ball rate, 53% in 2023. Okay. Among the best in the league. I mean, if he a lot qualified. of sinkers, I bet. Yeah, sinker, you know, change-up. I think he's got a cutter, curveball. Sure, that makes sense. Uh, really good at avoiding hard contact. Uh, yeah, those sinkers are so hard with, to score you know, think about with, <laughs> with Milwaukee's defense, very good defense behind that, that infield. You know, awesome Bryce, Bryce Terrain, Joey Ortiz, mm-hmm. Adamas, that's a phenomenal defense. That's the guys you, you want having ground balls hit at them. Uh, so, so Keuchel, he made his season debut yesterday, 26th on Wednesday. Four innings pitched, eight hits, five earned runs, a walk, four Ks, and 71 pitches. Uh, it, w- it wasn't the best. He really had only one bad inning, though. He gave up a, a it was, I think it was the third inning, second or third inning. I think it was the mm-hmm. third. It was, it went like walk, homer, homer. Yeah. So, it, but yeah. other than that, he was really good, you know, kind of limiting Spent a lot the of, Rangers' chances. So, Jackson Churio yesterday had a inside the park a home run, which is awesome. And then, of course, another grand slam that was hit by Reese Hoskins the other day. Um, and then yesterday, mm-hmm. another grand slam was hit. I can't remember Bowers, who it was. Jake, Jake Bowers, Bowers hit the one yesterday. Yeah, yeah. Been very fun to watch. That was a great game yesterday. And yeah. we basically essentially swept the uh, the uh, world champions. Defending champs. Yeah, Rangers, yeah. Rangers. they quite haven't, haven't quite been, you know, what they were last mm-hmm. year. I mean, Scherzer just made a season debut over the weekend. DeGrom's still out. But 
That's still a very talented team. But sure, is there pitching Milwaukee? No, he, okay, he pitched on. Damn, I wish I would have seen that. I think he pitched on Sunday. He pitched. He was. He really. Good. He was against the the Royals. He went like five innings allowed, <laughs> one base runner. I don't get why they pulled him after, what was his pitch count must have been high. Well, it's his, it's his first game back after missing the full fair half of the season. Fair so. enough. Fair enough. It, it makes sense. Uh, I know, kind of going into more MLB stuff. We got our second MLB All Star Game voting update. Uh, William Contreras, still first among NL catchers. No shock. Uh, Bryce Terang is fifth among NL second baseman, moving up one spot. No Adamas awesome. up to fourth among no shortstops, so it's uh, moving up one. Yelich still second. That is shocking. In, in but, among but, the outfield. Well, no, there's no good outfield. It's kind of crazy. Tatis the, hasn't the, been the same. The NL has just been horrible. I mean, <laughs> Bryce Harper's a first baseman That's now. That's a good thing, though. Yeah. Dodgers, yeah. I mean, <laughs> Dodgers' best Very outfielders, true. Teoscar Hernandez. Yeah, it's uh, not, uh, not ideal. Yeah, Joey RST is still third among NL third baseman, which, I mean, Manny, Mach- Manny Machado is ahead of him, who's not doing well this year. He's a I very, hate Manny Machado. Manny Machado, he's, I mean, he's not having a terrible season, I hate but, Manny. but I mean, by Manny I like Machado's standards. Like a lot standards, of fans don't yeah. like Dude, that, that, I agree. When he, who was that <laughs> when he, Domingo Santano? No, it wasn't a was, slide. Oh, the, oh, he, he stepped, was running, he he was Aguilar, running past yeah. first base, and he stepped on his Achilles. Yeah, it was, that was ridiculous. Jesus Aguilar in uh, yeah, 20 Oh, Jesus Aguilar, that's right. Yeah. Man, that was, dude, that was... Yeah. Horrid. It's like Machado's not been terrible this season. And he let go of his bat, you remember? I don't think yeah, that was with the Brewers, right. but it's like the guy yeah. is an asshole. Jo- Joey Ortiz has been much better than Manny Machado this season. That's the bottom line. And then Re- Reese Hoskins still fourth among uh, National League designated. Has it had a bit of a slump there. I think he's yeah. kind of Well, out he, of it. I mean, he was on the injured list, came back, and he, he's definitely slumped since he's, I mean, he's on my fantasy team, so he's hit. I mean, other than What's that, your other fantasy than the team doing? Slump, I'm the second highest scorer in the league, and I'm in last place. Still in last. Dang. Still in last. Three and ten. Those are always the worst seasons the worst. in fantasy. Second it's highest like, score, usually, That's more like a fantasy so football thing where fantasy yeah. football is so much more luck. But it's like in fantasy baseball, usually it kind of evens out over the course of the season mm-hmm. and just hasn't and happened And you're the yet. second highest scoring team? Yes. Who's the first highest scoring schedule, team? Are the they schedule's just place? rough. Um, I think they're... they're n- who is it? No, they're not in first place. Uh, it's, it's, uh, it's, I think it's Collins' friend Brady. Oh yeah, Brady. I know Brady. He came to the yeah. wiffle ball game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah he was at, and he was at our rugby tournament the weekend. So I said hi. I, we were like, I was like commiserating with him. I'm like, bro, is this? and he's like, he's like, yeah, me and Colin were saying the same thing. Like, we see your stats, and you're like, how are you not Dude, winning? That sucks. <laughs> crazy. I mean, at least like you have an excuse, you know? Yeah. How's Sass been doing? Sass teams, his team's good. He's got really good pitching. <laughs> he knows his stuff. I yeah, mean, well, no, he, he does. He's, he really he's, knows he's his baseball. Savant. He knows he really is. him and him and I were always talking about like the advanced stats, and so we've been talking a lot actually recently oh about gosh, baseball. That's hilarious. Just baseball, like, but it's yeah. He knows he knows all the stats. <laughs> stats. Like I'm like I'm trying to make trades with him with guys with like really good underlying numbers, and he's like, no, this guy's good. I'm like, man, okay. <laughs> so you're, you're you're trying to you're trying to scam him? And no, I'm not like, trying to you... scam him. I'm just it's just. Sometimes do you know, something that's advantageous for you. Well, yeah, I, I mean, yeah, a lot of times you know the, the underlying numbers don't for always both. correspond yeah, with you know yeah, how yeah. they perform on the field that's or the, and how they perform with you know with getting fantasy points. Yeah, but he he recognizes you know the value of the advanced stats and kind of how they kind of project you know in improve and not yeah. Some that's people that's are perfect for him. That's Some perfect people are just hard to trade with. Yeah. In fantasy. Oh, that, that's yeah. The, yeah I, I'm, I'm definitely hard to trade with. I've been trying to trade with like two people all season. It just hasn't been working. Me and Sass, I really love Sass. Sass and I have been going back and forth, and we're just like we're we're too shrewd. Yeah. <laughs> fantasy basketball I, is my specialty. Last year I got third. This year I got second place. Um, I was so pissed off because my team got second place and got beaten by Matthew, which mm-hmm. is unfortunate. Yeah. Um, but it's because there was Jalen Brunson, Giannis, Anthony Davis mm-hmm. were all injured. Yeah. And, and they didn't play the last week. So I'm like, oh. dude, I got destroyed. I'm Wait, like, what am cha- I supposed the to do? The championship's like the end of the regular season, yes. right? Yeah. It's, it's and, always, they, yeah. and so they were resting him for the playoffs. And I'm like, I'm going to see if, like, as a commissioner, if I can end the season, like, early. I, 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 I did that. Yes. For fantasy football, I did that. I ended not week 18, oh, yeah. but week 17. Mm-hmm. So it's because there's always a bunch of guys. Yes. Like, cause I remember one year I was, like, trying to start, like, Tyler Huntley in week 18 yeah. and I was like this this shouldn't be happening it should be my bit oh my god it should, be, yeah. my, it should be my best in the player Super Bowl place. Of speaking yeah, of which the first football. the first so, so sport, I changed it. the first sports bet I ever made was a three player parlay and two of the players hit I can't remember what it was but they hit and I had Tyler Huntley rushing for over 38 yards <laughs> Tyler Huntley I mean, was yeah. at 35 yeah and then got a concussion in the third quarter, got taken out. Whoa, I was like, bro, tough. I was like, concussion or not, let the dude take a couple more steps. <laughs> like, dude, I would have won. A, I would have won a lot of money too. This yeah. is, of course, the Potawatomi Sportsbook was in town, but I was like, man, mm-hmm. it sucked. 
That's funny. What else we got? We got the uh, the the WIAC, the WIAC, the, uh, yeah. the Olympic trials. Let's hear about that. Yeah, so the Olympic trials are going on for the Summer Olympics. You know, all the uh, it's, I've been trying to you know keep track of some of the Wisconsin athletes, and we got two two WIAC track and field athletes who competed. One well, one competed, one still has to compete. Uh, Yuri Lacrosse, Sam Blaskowski, is an Oshkosh native, uh, ran in the 100 meter dash. Uh, he t- he ran ten point ran in ten point two three seconds to qualify for the semifinals. Improved his time to 10.1 seconds in the semis. Wasn't good enough for the finals. I mean, this, this is a D3 athlete running. That's very, cool. very good. I think he is. He holds the the D3 mark this year and maybe all time. Like he's he's insane. There's some uh, hidden, think, yeah, definitely hidden gems uh, in track and field for mm-hmm. UW schools. For yeah, sure. UW, wait, I mean, UW lacrosse won the D3. I think out. A, a cross country title and I think like the outdoor track and field title. So they have a really good program up there. Uh, and then uh, UB Whitewater, Shelvin Garrett, a Beloit native, he will compete in the triple jump on June 28th. When is that? A couple of days? Tomorrow? That's, that's, this week, that's this weekend. Oh, Friday. Yeah, this this Friday. So fantastic. Keep well, an eye out for him. Let's go into some of the box. Of course, we had last night the 2024 first round of the mm-hmm. uh, NBA Bucks draft. Yeah. Tonight is the second round. There's going to be some good players that are still, some very good players that are mm-hmm. still on the board. Um, let's talk about it. Well, the Bucks for the first round got guard AJ Johnson. I believe he's an Australian pro right he's, now. He, he, he's, he played, so he played in, in New Zealand, but he's, oh, New Zealand. he's American. Okay. So he, he so instead, he has, instead of, so he's instead played, of, so so instead of going to college, he so, he's, to so he's played a bit of pro basketball, which is great. <laughs> So he's six a, four. Definitely took a, a different route. Yeah, yeah for sure. But I mean, route. the fact that he can do the, the fact that he can hold his own, I think, is good because there's a lot of I not say washed up, but a lot of washed up people that are big physical. Uh, mm-hmm. He's six four. He's got a six nine wins, wingspan, one hundred and sixty four pounds, and he's nineteen years old. Well, he spent the twenty three twenty four season in the NBL with the uh, with the Hawks in yeah, New Zealand. Hawks. Yeah. So, what Lamella are your guys' Ball thoughts there. about him? When yeah, I think I, I did say some on the ball. Yeah, so he averaged 2.9 points per game, oh. 1.3 rebounds per game. Oh, my God. 0.7 assists per game, oh shot 37%. God. Played 7.7 minutes per game. I think that's the big Definitely thing. Like, he wasn't good even good stats. enough to, like... Oh, my God, this guy sucks. He wasn't even good enough to really <laughs> crack the rotation So why did Zealand. we draft him? <laughs> Vinny makes a good point. Vinny yeah. makes a good point. He says so, he says he doesn't like it. He w- I, He's like... Yeah. He said... Also, why are we trying to develop somebody? Could have traded away. Yeah. Vinny says the time to win is now. He says, Agreed. I don't know how much we'll, he'll be able to contribute, uh, considering um, we barely played Marshawn and Ajax. Yeah. Vinny, I, of I'd course, agree. wants to yeah. be proven wrong, but he doesn't understand how any of this could happen. He wished we would have taken Flipowski. And Vinny also says Terrence Simmons... Uh, Terrence Shannon Jr. from yeah. Illinois. He would love to have seen that if we went to guard. I would route. have loved to see him, um, too. He said he had the allegations dropped. No harm, yeah. no foul. What do you guys think? Um, yeah, the problem with me is we just have so many young players now. Mm-hmm. Like, I would have loved to see at least one trade or something. Yeah. Like, yeah. So maybe we'll see a trade in the future with somebody, one of the young guys. I mean, yeah. Um, but, yeah, he's definitely... Su- He's got to be one of the most raw players in the draft. Yeah, yeah 100%. Um, I think seven minutes yeah. per game. I mean, that's crazy. They went in the first round. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, it was just – it was a surprise. There's a, there was a lot of good players. Uh, Keyshawn George, um, Johnny Furphy is still on the board too. We could get him today yeah. maybe. Yeah, go through – Dalton, go through some of these uh, players. Here. I really wanted Ryan Dunn. He's like one of the best defenders in the class. So. Yeah, he, he's really good. I think my concern with Dunn is I don't, he, he's – he has no offensive game. Mm-hmm. So it's just, I don't know how you could play him, like on especially with Giannis cool. in, uh, the, as a guy who can't. You know, I don't know if you guys remember right? Andre Roberson on OKC back. Yeah, in, uh, yeah. Westbrook and Durant. Yeah, when they would, I remember that in the he, playoff game they just fouled him. He, like every, only every thing play, he could yeah. do was defend. He couldn't <laughs> shoot. He couldn't do anything else. But who else do we have on the board for the, the um, pick? Isaiah Collier off in off of USC? Um, such a good scoring guard. Yeah. I mean, I guess we don't really need that. that but that's my I, thing. I, I only really, didn't really need a scoring guard. Yeah, yet. but to me, like, he was like a top ten player in the draft for me. Yeah. So for him to fall all the way down there, I mean, yeah. that's really good value. Maybe we could have drafted him, traded him, or sure, sure. You know, yeah, but, but I guess if everyone else is passing up on him true who else we got and yeah terrence shannon i know he had those allegations but totally dropped um, yeah he's all good he would have been a name i would have loved to see do you know the penn state guy on the list dalton uh mike oxling no <laughs> oh wow nice <laughs> <laughs> no i've never heard of him either the guy from morris had state too <laughs> 
Um, and then the one guy playing out of Pakistan. <laughs> so we'll yeah, have to do some more. We'll yeah, you, we'll you can do, say those yeah. names. We'll you can say do, those names. Yeah, so, uh, we'll have to do some more research on those yeah, players. So, so going, going into kind of A.J. Johnson a little more, he, he committed to Texas out of high school. Uh, he decided to go to the NBL for a year. Uh, he, he has, he has offensive upside. I think that's, that's undeniable. He's, really, he's got really good quickness. He's an, he's an athletic guy. But, I mean, just really big concerns about his, his lack of strength. I mean, 167 pounds. Definitely. That, that's like you're going to get bullied at the, at the yeah, NBA he's level. He's definitely the skinniest dude in the draft or yeah. uh, lightest dude, Apparently I should he, say. He had a good combine. He scored well. But, I mean. That's the, the thing. I think he had a really good combine. and. Uh, but, I mean, there, there's the, the consensus. Where there's two things. I mean, one, he was, he was a second-round pick. That, mm-hmm. was, that was pretty much across the board. The highest I saw him was like. Early second round. I agree. I mean, a lot, a lot of drafts had him going to late second round, and and everyone agreed he's he's a few years away from being an NBA contributor, and that that's my thing. The Bucks aren't in a position where they can develop a guy that that doesn't help the current team. I mean, it's it's, it's, a, little, it's a little bit reminiscent of, of drafting Jordan Love when, when Aaron mm-hmm. Rodgers was still that's here. True. It's like yeah, maybe that helps in the future. But then but then, but, but it, the, then but they, it made sense with Jordan Love yeah. now. I but, don't see but it. But that's the thing. It, it made sense to like develop the future, but it didn't help. I, I can see where Aaron Rodgers is coming from. It's like, hey, that's not helping me win a title. And that's right. that's what the Bucks need now. They need someone to help help them win a title. I mean, so and what, it do you, was, what do you think is going to happen then? He's not going to play like at all. He's going to play like we'll see. We'll see what Doc's uh, rotations are going to look this, like. This guy's not. He's, it's going to be really difficult for him to even get. Maybe he'll be in the G League leagues. like all year. There's definitely going to be some weird rotations. There's, uh, there's got to be at least one or two yeah. trades this year, too. But that's the thing. Pick 23, there's a lot of guys mm-hmm. that could still contributing. There was. What do you guys think about the number ones. one overall pick? And why Why do you think it's all well, these got, guys coming yeah. out of France? Because um, there's no one really that great this year. It was, it was a really – it's more of a, a – like the top ten talent was you know, not guys that would have gone top ten in most years. Sure. It was – but I think the the overall the depth of talent was really good, really good. But yeah, the the it yeah, wasn't really anyone that stood out. I agree. The so, top of the draft wasn't very strong. Yeah. So if, so if the Bucks won AJ Johnson, they they really could have gotten in the second round. They could have traded down in the second round and probably still got him. One thing about AJ Johnson though, uh, last year he was projected to be like the lottery. Yeah. At the beginning of the year, so. I think that I've, the scouts always go too hard for the. the Mm-hmm. They, they love picking guys that used to be a lottery projection yes. in the NBA. And that's what does just that like, mean, lottery projection? Uh, it's top 14. So top, yeah, top 14, the teams that don't make the playoffs. Mm-hmm. Oh, they, it's they, a they lottery? Enter, they enter, for, enter a lottery, I yeah, see. to see who gets the first overall pick. That's silly. So, I mean, yeah. a, few, a few other you know, thoughts really? here on the Bucks. Because it's like, wouldn't the worst? I don't know. I don't... I know the NHL yeah. does that too. I don't know if I really like that. Well, they have it. So is it People kind of not tank encouraged as much. Tank, tanking. Yeah, and they, they've, they've changed it a little bit. They had... They used to have, I mean... Really strong odds if you were the last last mm-hmm. place team that you get the first overall pick and they've kind of scaled that back. Really, so it's not yeah. you're not as and assured. Teams still tank in the NBA too. Yeah, like the Spurs. I mean, they're mm-hmm. definitely not trying. Yeah, they just don't have anyone good. Yeah, <laughs> and look at the Hawks. How the Hawks were like a decent team this last yeah. year. They were they were you know, Hawks almost made the playoffs almost and they the get the number one pick. Yeah, so that's gotta suck <laughs> for other teams. Yeah. But, like the Pistons, I mean, they got five again, and they had one of the worst records last year. I don't. They were one of the worst teams ever to take the floor in the yeah. NBA. <laughs> last year, I think they also had like four or five, and they had one of the worst records yeah. again. And yeah, insane. <laughs> so yeah, so I mean, a, a couple more thoughts and just on the on the Bucks pick. I mean, I really would have liked a big man, but I feel like the guys that were on, the guy taken before me, you know, Kalel Ware, I think went fourteenth. Mm-hmm. I would have loved him. I, that he was he was probably top of my board, um, or he he went fifteenth. Uh, excuse me. Uh, uh, Eves Misi, really good, you know, athletic defensive player. Point twenty first to the Pelicans, and then Deron Holmes, twenty second to the um, to the to the Nuggets. Really, really skilled big man who can stretch the floor. Uh, I think the, the only real big man that was left was 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 Kyle Filipkowski. I'm not sure how, how do you feel about him. He was uh, he's probably behind these Vinny three really guys wanted, for me. Vinny really wanted him to get picked by the box. Yeah, I don't love him, but I, if they pick him today, I won't be mad. Yeah, he was but definitely a first why, round talent. Why do you think Vinny's? And of course, we're speculating, but why do you think Vinny would have liked him to be picked by the box? Because they need they need a big man. He's a seven footer. He, uh, he's got skills too. He can yeah. dribble, uh, shoot. He's he's a good scorer. He's got he's got touch. I mean, you can't. Always teach the like the the touch, of yeah, the especially finesse. at that at, with that size. Oh yeah, because it's so hard to move to begin with. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I and mean, he's got he's got good athleticism. I mean, 
There's a, little, a few concerns about his physicality, but he's a really good rim protector. I mean, watch him in the NCAA, NCAA tournament. It was really hard to get anything past mm-hmm. him. Well, and these guys are rookies, too. I mean, there's a lot of potential. I mean, these these guys yeah. can put them on a diet. They can put them in the weight room. They can, they can I feel like, mold the guys. Yeah, I think – and Philip Kowski is really a guy that can kind of – in the mold of, you know, Brooke Lopez where, you know, rim defender who can shoot the three – so if he's and he's still on the board, it's the Bucks Bucks pick thirty third um, in the in the draft. So I, that's the, the, the third pick of the second round. Hammer Furphy or I don't even know who's left. Yeah, so yeah, like Philip Kowski's left, Furphy's left, uh, Bobby Clintman. Uh, he spent a year at Wake Forest when they went to Sweden. I forget what his nationality. He's, he's I think there's another center German. too that's left. Yeah, so oh, Cl- Clint, yeah, Clint Clintman's got a six nine six nine. He's got a six eleven wingspan. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Adam Bone is probably, I mean, after I, Ryan like Dunn, he, at, Bone is a really good defender. Mm-hmm. He, he's a beefy guy. He's like 6'8", 240. Beefy. But he's really athletic. I mean, the offensive game might come, but that's another guy who could go. Uh, you know, Tyler Kolick was, is still available. I don't what think the Bucks will get Kolek, him. Did he play for Marquette? Marquette. Oh, that's right. Yeah, Kolick's still I available. you trolling right there saying yeah. that. Me? No, yeah. I don't see. <laughs> see, I can talk I can talk baseball and football, yeah. but basketball, man, I don't know. Hey, Kolek, like, I, I would be happy with Kolek, too. I think he'd be a good I guess. Guy. I think yeah. they need size. Well, he'd they probably be happy to stay in Milwaukee. I guess, but I think that the Bucks need size, and I think they have to go, you know, I think Bona or, you know, Clintman or Philip Kowski. I think if they, if they go, I mean, maybe Furphy. I think Furphy's 6'9", but if, he's not. He's an mm-hmm. offensive first player, and mm-hmm. they just, I mean, A.J. Johnson, another offensive first player. If we get Kolek, um, I'm sure Pat Bev's gone, and... Yeah, I'm, I'm sure a bunch of players are just gone. I don't think we're gonna. I, I, th- a I think a bunch players. of the, those guys are gone regardless. Mm-hmm. I think they're gonna True. kind of press press the reset button button a little bit. Well, if you look on the second page, the first page starts with, of course, a black and white photo of Damian Lillard and Giannis. The second page goes into the people that are under contract, the people that are free agents. Of course, Bev, Beasley, uh, Washington, the uh, Thanasis, Jay Crowder, um, and Gallinari are all free agents. Um, of course, there's been some speculation talking about trading Bobby Portes, trading Brooke Lopez. What do you guys think about the future, the immediate future of this team for 24? What would you guys so like to see? Those guys have been kind of in shop for I feel like every yeah. offseason. There's there's rumors around them. Um, I mean, the Grizzlies, Pat Pelicans, Magic, kind of looking at Brooke Lopez. I mean, Lopez, he signed with the Rockets. He's got to be old, he, man. So he signed yeah. with the Rockets last year, and then the, the Bucks matched his deal because he, re- he was a restricted free agent. I mean, he's he's really. Oh, so he came back to the box. Yeah, so, so he's he really he's starting to look out of place with his mm-hmm. lack of athleticism. He's just getting. And old. The, the the quote here's another quote: Rival executives have also come away with the sense that Bobby Portis and Pat Connaughton are available on the trade market if Milwaukee can make a notable win now upgrade. As uh, per Mike, uh, NBA insider Michael Scotto. I mean, none of that's all that surprising. Obviously, the Bucks will trade those guys if they can get an upgrade. For but, sure. Yeah, what are your well, thoughts? Well, they're they're all in their last year. Their deals too. I'm pretty mm-hmm. sure. So. I mean, if the deal's right, it would have been a little different last year to trade them because it's like, okay, then we would have money to spend this year and yeah. you know, free agency. So, I mean, their value is definitely down a little bit, but maybe a team will want an expiring deal too for free agency next year too. Mm-hmm. It's all about, I don't know, uh, if yeah. we trade anybody, I mean, Brooke or Bobby, but I don't even know. That would know. be tough, man. I don't even know if we should Bobby. I don't even know. I just don't know how much either. trade value they have. Yeah, I mean, both they're, they're all what getting... value would Brooke have? He's old, yeah. But there's teams Some that... teams want him. But the Grizzlies, I mean, they want him, and now they just got Zach Eady. Yeah. So, yeah. Pelicans got a big... They got uh, Eves Misi. That's uh, that's why I always sure. like... I like the, how the drafts before free agency. So, yeah. depending on who you yeah. draft. Yeah, yes, I'm trying to see who the Magic... the Magic have a first-round pick? The Magic? Is it... That was another team. Oh, they they got Tristan De Silva, so not not a center, that was a but good pick. That's a good pick. Another good yeah, Bucks. yeah. It, it was tough. A lot. Of, I was I was following along, and every guy I picked before the box. They I was got like, another. Oh, man. I'm pretty sure the Magic got another guy late in the draft too. Maybe not. But. Well, let's if you guys are cool with it, let's move on to another NBA point here, quick. Mm-hmm. I want to talk about JJ Redick. Now that the dust is kind of settled, of course, Dalton, we got your live reaction last week. You're in the middle of a forest. What were you doing in the middle of a forest? Uh, my parents, they have a huge like forest in the back of the yard, so I was just cleaning up a bunch of stuff. <laughs> That's fun. And I just look at my phone, and I'm like, oh, sweet. Well, we appreciate and it. I've never been way back there. I was like, I just want to explore. That's so, yeah, it looked awesome. 
Well, let's hear. So, what are what's some of your reactions now that we've had some more time to think about it? The JJ Reddick signing, of course, it was unbeknownst to me. I didn't know it. The guy hasn't really coached anything. I feel like basketball mm-hmm. is one of those te- sports that you can kind of get away with it. Football coach, you got to know what's going on. Of course, an example of this is Jeff Saturday, who served as the income interim head coach, and of course won his first game, but then, you know, kind of had some uh, miscues after the fact. What are your thoughts on JJ Reddick being the Lakers coach for four years? Um. I hope he just makes it all four years. We'll see. Uh, LeBron and him have that good chemistry. So, I mean, they were on that podcast for I don't know how long. Sure. I think they had like a um, – it was like about a year. But they, they're they just good friends, so it's hard to be – like when you're in a position where um, you're working with somebody and they have more power over you and your friends, it's like, oh, dude. It's tough. Yeah, yeah it's work environment with friends. with friends is kind of rough sometimes. Yeah, but. absolutely. What's, I mean, they when the Bucks got uh, – What's his name? Griffin. He was kind of the player's first oh, coach. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I, I think like doesn't always it doesn't always work out like, how yeah, you expect it to. Yeah, like, you you kind of need someone who's going to lay the hammer down mm-hmm. and tell you how it how you is how it is and how you need to hear it. Rather and maybe than he, he will. Maybe he will though. So we'll see how it is. Yeah. I like Reddick. I think he's. I like him. He knows the game. The only thing I mean, he's he has no coaching experience, and to yeah. go right from there to the NBA, I think that's. On one of the most spotlighted teams in the it NBA, is the, too. yeah, it's yeah, that's the that, that's that's the, the thing that a lot of a lot of the critics are saying. It's, it's one of the biggest names too yeah. in the NBA, like of all time too. Like it's maybe insane. if you know, you know, like he probably he knows his ex knows, but can he you know manage egos? Can he you know motivate guys? You know put develop guys? You know put the right guys in position to win? I think that's the big question mark here. Yeah. yeah. Well, well, or is with, basically with Darvin Ham too, or is he, or is he just gonna be like a mouthpiece for LeBron? That could, that could <laughs> well, also be the case. Ham didn't, Ham didn't provide much. I, mean, uh, I just uh, Ham just got over talked from yeah, LeBron and did, everybody mm-hmm. else on the team too. That's why I, I'm, I'm glad the Bucks got him back. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, he's an awesome assistant coach. But, yeah, I mean yeah. when you're on the Lakers, it's just. I don't know. Right. I mean, there's so much politics. You, it's, it and that's is, the thing with Reddick. I think it's honestly better for him is because he's coming in as somebody mm-hmm. that's inexperienced in the sense that you're going to have, if you have a coach that's going to come in and try to be the boisterous voice of the team, there's mm-hmm. going to be a lot of head bashing between LeBron and people in the office. So I don't know. I, I think, I think this could work out, you know, he also uh, got fined in his first interview. So for what? What happened? I think he dropped a couple f bombs. It was pretty funny. <laughs> That's hilarious. Yeah, he's not in the pod. He's not in the pod <laughs> yeah. anymore. Yeah. Well, they, they, they're learn. making him stop the podcast, which is funny because the the Green Bay, you have to be Green Bay, their bad, their basketball coach Doug Gottlieb. They yeah. they just oh, got. Yeah. He's, he's keeping his podcast. Yeah. He's like, I don't know how he's going to manage that. I, I think feel the like Lakers is a bit different. Being, than being a college, Green Bay. being a college head coach is more. All, like more encompassing more work than being an NBA coach just in terms of time you have a smaller staff you got you got to recruit sure. too with recruiting I'm not saying it's easier I'm not saying or, I'm not saying it's harder I just say it, it, it takes it's more time so it can yeah, be a different no, challenge that. well cool that's awesome let's yeah. get into some well, of our... I, I think we got a few more NBA things we got to touch on we got we? the surprising picks surprising I'm, 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 gonna know, I'm gonna know who who Dalton was most surprised where, by where 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 is this this is uh the previous page oh, I'll say who I like. Yeah, I think Dal- uh, I, th- I yeah. think the Wolves did a really great job. Yeah, I can Dillingham. Uh, they traded for Dillingham and uh, they got Terrence Shannon, who the Bucks could yeah. have gotten. That, yeah, those those two, are two just great players. Yeah, two really good guys. The guys that can shoot, that can create their own offense, and and they have length. I mean, what's Dillingham? I guess Dillingham's a little bit shorter, but Terrence Shannon's got some good length, and that really that fits into you know, what what they have. They have the defense. I think now they have more offense. That, that's gonna be a dangerous exactly. team. Exactly. Um, and two picks I like back to back was the Bulls and Thunder at eleven mm-hmm. and twelve with uh, Bulls getting uh, Buzelis. Yeah, but that, that's a steal at eleven. He was I, I thought he was gonna go maybe like top, top six. Five. Yeah, top so, five. That's yeah, what, that's what I was. So seeing. that's just crazy value at eleven. And um, I know value isn't everything in a draft. Yeah, but some, I mean you got to look at it a little bit because mm-hmm. teams are. I mean the teams that are at the end of the first are seeing these players fall. I mean maybe you could trade out too and. Yeah. Um. But the Thunder at twelve two getting Topic. I mean, he was another player mm-hmm. I thought could easily go yeah. to the top five too. Yeah. He's a great player, and of course the Thunder getting one of the best teams in the league already, first seed last mm-hmm. year, and they're just getting one of the one of the best rookies in the draft. So. Oh yeah. What do you, what do you think about the the, the Alex Caruso Josh Giddy trade? Going <laughs> I, here? I think. Who, who man, Caruso is so good. So. 
I think, yeah, the, th- really I think the Thunder win that deal. I yeah, mean, for sure. The, the Bulls were holding out for so much and only get know, shot. Like, Giddy's they, a good, they Giddy's a good player. Giddy's a good player, but... Yeah, Giddy is a good player, but yeah, I mean... they. He's got one more year on his contract. He's going to be a free agent next year. I think, like, like before the trade deadline this year, they got pick, offered a pick that would have been, like, top 10. So it, it, Plus, they, I think, another pick, too. Didn't they want, like, four first-round picks? Yeah, so they, wanted some, they wanted, like, a crazy haul they were never going to get for a, a guy who's, like, sixth man of the year. But they're crazy. There's to a, settle for oh, that. There was just, a lot of good trades in the NBA right. this yeah. week. Yeah, but, but, I mean, some of my surprises picked Dalton Connect falling all the way to 17. Oh, yes. I mean, I thought he was, he was probably going to go, like, sixth or seventh. The Lakers got him. I think yeah, that's, he's that's a huge. Stud. He's going to be he, – I think he'll be really good, especially, like, with LeBron getting all the attention. He'll be a good player for Reddick, um, for sure. Yeah, Zach Eady going ninth, going in the lottery to the Grizzlies. I think that was about as high as anyone saw him going. Yeah, I agree 100%. I mean, he could have been probably falling out of the first, too. Yeah, so. I, I, exactly. It's definitely uh, a mystery player. Donovan Klingon dropping to seventh, going to the Trailblazers. I mean, I, I know the, uh, the Grizzlies won E.D. Or they won Klingon, he They settled for E.D. Uh, Klingon was probably, I mean, I think, was he still? You know, he wasn't the first collegiate player taken. That was uh, Steve, uh, Reed Shepard. A little bit surprised. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I think Klingon, we thought was going to go, no, top five. Uh, Dylan Jones going 22nd. I thought that was a little... Or D- Deron Holmes, sorry. Let's we'll talk about Jalen Jones in a sec. Deron Holmes, he was a guy that was kind of all over the place. As I well. loved him. I mean, really he stuff. didn't work out yeah. for the Bucks though. I don't think. I think he said a team was going to draft him. So, mm-hmm. and that's what yeah. the, Nugget, the Nuggets did. They yeah, traded I mean, up and yeah. Dylan Jones going 26 in the first round. I thought that was a bit of a reach, but he's a really good collegiate player, um, a little undersized. And Johnny Furphy, Philip Kowski, and Tyler Kolek fall in the second round. Hopefully, the Bucks can get one of them. They'll probably go quick. Well, the Bucks have a the third pick in the second round, so, so yeah. hopefully we get somebody. Mm-hmm. Awesome. Well, let's move on to some of our MLB lineups. So, of course, we have a picking our um, um, all-time MLB lineups. Of course, Liam is has inspiration from Willie Mays. R.I.P. Uh, R.I.P. Liam, who do you got? Yeah. So we'll we'll start with catcher Josh Gibson. I mean. He was dubbed the Black Bay of Ruth for a reason. He led the Negro League in four in home runs every year between 33 and 39, 11 times in 14 seasons, won two triple crowns of them. I mean, he's one of the best power hitters to ever live. Uh, so he's easy, easy pick a catcher. First base, Lou Gehrig uh, finished top five in MVP voting every year between 1930 and 37. He had 185 RBI in 1931, the second best of all time. Uh, 11 straight years in OPS over 1,000. And he's third in career all-time OPS at 1,080. Uh, second base, I feel like there's not a lot of great second basemen. That's probably the weakest position. I had a tough time. But I, feel like I had to go with uh, Rodgers, Hornsby. Let him be an average on-base percentage slugging in OPS every year between 1920 and 25. Third base, another another tough one, but I think Mike Schmidt, 548 homers, most among MLB third basemen. I can also see Brooks Robinson in that Brooks space, Robinson, too. Yeah, I think Brooks Robinson was probably a little better at the glove, but I think I think – Mike Schmidt's a little better all around. Uh, Schmidt's one of 11 players with three MVP trophies, 12-time All-Star, 10 Gold Gloves, and six Silver Sluggers. Uh, I think shortstop was another tough one. Uh, I was looking Jeter, but I think I went Onis Wagner. Led the MLB in WAR every year from 1902 to 1909. Arguably one of the best fielders of all time, and he can you know, hold his own with the bat. Uh, left field, Ted Williams. I mean, maybe the best pure hitter that the game's ever seen. Second all-time in OPS. <laughs> Had an OPS above 1,000 every year of his career except for one. Led the league in that category 10 times. Last player to bat above 400. Uh, all-time leader in on-base percentage at 482. That is that awesome. something else. Center field, I mean, you have to go Willie Mays. 24-time all-star. Uh, one of three players to top 15 all-time in hits and home runs. 12-time gold glove. Even though the award didn't exist until he was six years in the league. Led the league in... Oh, you can keep going. Can yeah, let league war ten times. What are you saying? I just want to say twenty-four time All Star. That is crazy. insane. Just, that is Even ridiculous. for any sport, playing insane. that long yeah. and being at that level, then the only team, the only guy with more, Hank Aaron, twenty-five time All Star. Uh, I think he's the true home run leader in my eyes. Hold the record for <laughs> RBIs and, to- and stolen ba- and total bases. Put him at right field. Uh, DH Babe Ruth. I mean, come on now. Let the MLB mm-hmm. in slugging in OPS thirteen times. Home runs 12 times, war 11 times. Owens the three highest war seasons of all times. Uh, pitcher was a tough one. Had to down, down to two guys, the last name Johnson. Went with Walter Johnson, all, all-time Walter, career yep. leader. And shutouts 110. Washington Senators. Yeah, Washington Senators. Only won one title, but he was he was dominant. Uh, career 2.17 ERA. Led the league in strikeouts 12 times in a time, you know, when it was very a contact-heavy league. 
And I think re- relief pitcher is the easiest one. Mariano, Mariano Rivera, all-time saves leader, uh, all-time leader in ERA plus, which is you know kind of adjusted ERA, 13-time All-Star. Uh, so a couple honorable mentions, real quick. Barry Bonds, even though, I mean he was really good even without the steroids. Uh, Randy Johnson, probably the best Absolutely. pitcher in recent memory. Mike Trout, I think he's he's the one guy had, that one active guy has a chance to be on this list. Stan Musial, A. Rod, Ty Cobb. Uh, probably the best contact hitter of all time, Johnny Bench. Catcher. So I'm going to go through. This is my my fun list here, but I'm going to go through my actual list. I think I think catcher. We're going to go with Yogi Berra. Uh, dad, definitely a yeah. a huge player back in the day. Won, absolute, won so many titles. Absolute dude. pleasure to watch. Winner. First baseman for me was between Jamie Foxx and Lou Gehrig. Mm-hmm. I got to go with Jamie or sorry Jimmy Fox. I got to go with Jimmy Sh- Jimmy, Jimmy yeah. Fox. Jimmy Fox. Um, absolute one. blast to watch. Second baseman Rogers. Blast. Blast. You, you watched him back in the day. Yeah. Second baseman <laughs> Rogers Hornsby. Yeah. Uh, followed up by I'd say Joe Morgan is. Also a good choice. Oh, yeah. Uh, shortstop, I have Cal Ripken Jr. Yeah, that's that's a good one. I think, I think he gets a little more credit for his longevity, but he's also a very good player. Third baseman, Brooks Robinson. Okay. Left fielder, Stan. Stan go the with man. Big Stan. Center fielder, I gotta go. Ty Cobb. Right wow. fielder, Hank Aaron. Mm-hmm. We're gonna go with DH. I gotta go with Paul Molitor. Absolutely in wow. the DH position. Wow. Over 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 Babe <laughs> Ruth. Absolutely, well, dude. Babe Ruth was. Dog shit. What? If he was playing in today's day and age, dude, he, he was so be dominant. He was, yeah, dude, because they were throwing 70 miles an hour. Like I'd be able to be dominant too. Else. Was so Right-handed pitcher, Cy Young. Yeah. Left-handed pitcher, Warren Spahn. Warren Spahn, yeah. Relief pitcher, Rolly Fingers. Rolly. And of course, manager, I got to go with Casey Stengel. Yeah. What, what, who's list are you reading off? The of? Major League Baseball all time <laughs> team. All right. So okay, but like, what if Babe Ruth grew up in today's no, age? No, Babe Ruth like, is, is training. Com- literally yeah, complete dog been. shit. He's dog shit. So we're going to talk. So my actual list, catcher, I got to go with Buster Posey. I think Buster Posey um, is one of, I think, the best p- catchers. I think the best catcher in all the 2010s. I yeah. think he was an absolute team presence. Number uh, first base, I got to go Bryce Harper. Bryce can hit the baseball off of things. Can. Or hit the baseball. He can, he can hit, hit the baseball. Hit the cover, hit, off, hit the the cover off the baseball. Second base, I got to go Chase Utley. Man. Chase, wow. Chase Utley for second base. Third base, Chipper Jones. Not even a question. The guy can hit. Chipper's his, really good, yeah. His defense, his defense, his defense was good. Uh, shortstop. I'm not entirely sure who to put at shortstop, so I'm going to take inspiration and choose Cal. I would have chosen Ch- Cal Ripken Jr. Mm-hmm. Um, left field, Bryce Harper, man. That guy's a he, he can't have Bryce watch. Harper at first base and left field. <laughs> <laughs> oh. He did put him in. <laughs> oh, geez. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Okay, so, oh, well, geez. For, uh, first base, I'm going to go with, um, I'm going to go with Albert Pujols. Okay, that's fair. Um, Bryce Harper, left field, center field, Mike Trout, right field, yeah. prime Bautista, which is like half a season. Yeah, it's pr- Oh, jeez. Designated, designated hitter. I got to go with Barry Bonds. Barry Bonds. Yeah. Just that playoff run, Bautista. Absolutely. 100%. That's it. Um, I have five starting pitchers. Kershaw, okay. Randy Johnson, yeah. Madison Baumgartner, Justin Verlander, and Noah Syndergaard. Absolute fucking you take giants to watch. Syndergaard over DeGrom? Yeah. 100%. Wow. I've... It's my list. <laughs> I got to go with relief pitcher Mariano Rivera, and then, of course, Aroldis Chapman Ooh, to roll things nice. out. No accuracy, but, man, he can throw far. Hard. <laughs> <laughs> what did he top at? Like 106? Right now he's throwing 100. He's throwing no. I think 104 he, nope. he topped at. Nope. He threw 106.1 against the uh, Pirates when he was on the Reds. And this was back in 2013. He was looking it up. Fact checking. But they had, that's what they had on the broadcast is 106.1. So it might have been like 105.9, but they on the broadcast had 106. What is a uh, scheme? So they say 105.8. 1058. Sure. So, what is Skeens max out this year? Skeens, I don't know. He's probably been like 102, 103. Ben Joyce has been faster. Yeah, he's just like year. consistently he's throwing that 103, bitch. 102. What do you got, Dalton? All right, I'll go list? in. Uh, I had a little fun too with my list. Yeah, so definitely. Catcher, fun, sure. uh, I put Yogi Berra. I mean, he was nice. just a winner, so had to include him. And then uh, first Our base. Our lists look very similar. That's funny. I think you stole a couple players. No. <laughs> yeah. No. <laughs> I'm just kidding. All right. First base, Albert Pujols. I mean, growing up, I, every time we played them, yep. it was just like, dude, Pujols this is dude is fun to this watch. This just going to bomb one. He's, He's just, very fun yeah. to watch. No, he is. Yeah, I mean, for 10 years, he was like probably the best he was, in the he was insane. Um, second base, Chase Utley. I mean, uh, do you think uh, he's Hall of Famer next year? or? <sighs> I he's got to be Hall of Fame. I don't know if he's Hall of Fame at all. I mean, I, I think Chase Elliott's going to the Hall of Fame. Um, That's I, just me, though. I mean, I think he's he has a good chance. Yeah. 
But uh, all right, third base, Chipper Jones. He was so dominant for the Braves. Yes, one hundred percent. Shortstop, Derek Jeter. Uh, I mean, I, what? Derek Jeter? I don't know. I I'm think more I, I was Ch- having fun. I'm more in about Chase Utley. But I think Derek Jeter had a great team presence. I think he was able to be well, a leader I when he. I, think he's I don't good. care. I love him. Yeah. So I'm gonna. Have I love him too. I think sure. Derek Jeter's a really good hitter. I think he gets. He gets credit for being a much better fielder he than he actually was. He had that five-time gold yes. glove, and he I don't think he yeah. should have deserved all five of those. But um, He was a very good player. He was. And he won, I don't know how many championships he won, but four? he won a good amount, too. How many, how many did, did uh, you well, do? Won, like they four? They won three in a row from 97, or was it four in a row from 97 to 01? They, they won a bunch in the 90s. I wasn't born for some of those yeah, years. Yeah, uh, when were you born? 2001. Damn. Yeah. God. <laughs> All right, uh, left field, Barry Bonds, yep. 762 home runs. I mean, I love obviously, that. Yeah. Roy did up. Roy. But I love but, that I mean, quote of that, his. Before that, he was still like a 30-30 mm-hmm. guy every year. I love that quote of his when they asked him, how do you hit home runs? And he says he tries to catch the ball with the bat. And I'm <laughs> like, that is brilliant. <laughs> so, so Derek Jeter won five World Series. He won. Okay, I don't need to go through that real one, but yeah. It's a handful of rings right there. Yeah. That's insane. Um, center field, Mike Trout. I mean, yeah. he's just so legendary yeah. the past yeah. how many Poor years. Mike Trout. <laughs> um, right field, I put Ken Griffey Jr. I know he's known for, what, he's center field? center fielder, but yeah, I think but that's fair. You can play right, yeah, you I want to right put him in right field. You can play any of those outfielders anywhere, honestly. <laughs> him and his dad playing together, I mean, that was just That you know, was awesome. Do so you remember the cool. back-to-back home runs by them? Was it I, that, didn't I they have know. that where they had back-to-back home runs by the, the Griffey boys? Mm, I saw a clip the other day, though. He stole a fly ball. Right in front of his dad. He just That's funny. runs right in front of him. It's super cool. Um, D.H. Babe Ruth. I mean, the dude, I think he's only one-time MVP because of the rules back then. But, I mean, he would have won so he dominated, many. He, he's he, dominated he was, the game on, like... He was like so dominant. We've, we've he was, he, he he was all, no, all jokes aside, Babe Ruth is he the changed, player. He changed the game. Absolutely. Like, From him to the second best player in the league mm-hmm. was just an insane yeah, Babe Ruth is difference. Insane. I agree. And that's at a time there was a lot of really good... Like, a lot of really good guys on the Yankees and like in the league as a whole. I agree. I love your upcoming picks here. Uh, starting pitcher, I, I put Randy I Johnson five times Cy Young. Yeah. Uh, pretty sure he killed a bird too, right? Yes, he did. Mm-hmm. A dove. That was just yeah. awesome. Yes. Yeah. yeah. When you when you think of like starting pitchers, you think of like who who scares opponents. Like who mm-hmm. would you not want to face? Randy Johnson. Face Randy Johnson. Greg Maddox. Um, oh, I wouldn't swing if I was in the um, box. Yeah, with I mean, him. Greg Maddox is less scary. <laughs> you just know he's going to paint the corner every time. Randy Johnson, he's. I would no. It's Greg gonna Maddox. Be, it's going to be ninety-eight no. up and in, and then a yeah. slide. It looks no, like going to hit you. Greg, like no, three feet on the strike zone. I disagree. I think that Greg Maddox. I would be. I would be terrified. He definitely <laughs> has that aura to him. He definitely has that mean mug oh, face. Yeah. yeah. And uh, relief. I had either Trevor Hoffman or Raleigh Fingers. Yeah. I, I had. Hoffman. I had to put a Brewer on there and. I mean, both of them are just so legendary anyways. Mm, Hoffman, yeah. yeah. I remember Hoffman as a kid just watching him like, yeah. oh, yeah, we're definitely winning this game. Yes. Yeah. You know? yeah. Like, with the, he so wasn't as good with the Brewers, though. He was he, he was pitching so slow by that. True, he, true. He, 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 his last he, years. He blew, he blew what was he on, the Padres? Too, yeah, for the Padres, basically. And then he blew a few, few too many saves to Brewers. But he, he set the record that was mm-hmm. soon after broken. But. Nice. Well, cool. You said Aura, though. Aura, Pujols. Pujols to me. Absolutely, yeah. dude. Dylan Aura. Yeah, absolutely. And, but he's a nice guy, though. But he has <laughs> that, like, big... He's like, man, he's a scary-looking guy. Um, who, uh, Joey Votto. Joey yeah, Votto's Joey Votto. I was Dylan thinking Aura. about putting Joey Votto on there. I was like, yeah. Well. Yeah, I it'll be interesting if Votto's a Hall of Famer. I think he'll be close. I think he'll be very close. I think yeah. that his stats were very, very, very consistent. Yeah. I, I wonder what Utley, though. I don't think he... He had a good peak, but I feel like the, the, his career overall wasn't quite good enough. Let's move on to some more college athletes of the week. Who do we yeah. have? Yeah, so guy we mentioned previously, Shelvin Garrett, the second. Sorry, I've left out the second part. Uh, horizontal jumper. Uh, for horizontal Yibby. jumper? Instead of a vertical jumper. What is a horizontal jump? What, what <laughs> event is that? Long jumps, hor- horizontal. Uh, instead of high jump. I've never, <laughs> I've never heard anybody say horizontal I, that's jumper. What, that's his position on the website. That's hilarious. So he uh, does triple jump, long jump, stuff yeah, like for, that. for, That's hilarious. For uh, Yibby Whitewater, men's track and field. That's junior funny. attended Beloit Memorial High School. Uh, three-time triple jump All-American Outdoors, six-time honoree overall. Wow. He was a runner-up in the triple jump at the D- NCAA D3 Outdoor National Championships in 2022 and 2023. Uh, he was a member of the Whitewater football team 
and was previously a sprinter before focusing exclusively on the jumping, the horizontal jumping aspect. We have Genesis that. Eggert, the pitcher from Grand Valley State Softball, a senior from Green Bay, attended West Pier High School, pitched 137 innings in 2024, finishing with 13 and 9, uh, with 121 strikeouts and 1.74 ERA, had a no-hitter against Ohio Dominican in the first game of the NCAA Midwest Regionals, an honorable mention. In the uh, G in the all uh, G L I A C in 2024 yeah. and 23, impressive. Okay, going back to the, what we said about Chapman, he is the hardest pitch this year, 104 miles an hour, nice, which is crazy. Going from 2010 to 2014, yeah. and still being the fastest pitcher in the league, and he had some down years there. But he re- he rediscovered himself. Yeah, the, I think with the kind of the end of the Yankees here, he was you know down you know, like 97, 98. I follow him on Instagram, and there is one photo that he just recently posted mm-hmm. that is terrifying um <laughs> it, the guy is huge of course his, his, his legs are like something huge else. but it's um the tattoos so here the cuban missile this is the photo bro this is insane i'm gonna pass it around i want to get your live reaction to this photo so dude he looks insane wow those arms are like they're so, they're and so, the so posing with the German Shepherd will pass to you. You can't really see his legs though, but yeah, those arms. His just, arm and he's all cuts. tatted out, dude. Cut. That Holy is cut. I mean, shit, <laughs> dude! He looks like a dog. Oh, he does. <laughs> oh That's my just an awesome god! Dog to yeah. have with him too. That would be the type of dog he would have too, like, <laughs> bro. If that if that dog. guy if I was tatted bro, up, bro. If I'm in the batter's box and this guy comes, I'd be like, <laughs> hell no! I'd be like, I'd be like, hey, coach, take me out <laughs> for real. Fuck <laughs> that, dude. Hey, one thing I want to say, uh, Shelvin Garrett. That Whitewater football team is like one of the best football oh, yeah. teams. I, I don't know if they're D2 or D3. D3, yeah. But they are just always, every year, they're one of the best D3 schools yeah. uh, for football. Yeah. And so for him to be on that football team alone is Yeah, just he, he was a wide receiver. He got, you know, he had like, a, I think, like 100 receiving yards over the season. So he, yeah, he started at like football. I think it was that upper Iowa football, transferred to Whitewater and football and then track. And then he was a sprinter. And then he's like, I'm, I, don't know, I don't know if he was doing long jump even. And then he, <laughs> That's Tri- awesome. Yeah, the triple jump, yeah. That's impressive. Okay, do we got time for some trivia? Sure. I'll, I'll, we'll be short this week. So um, I have a list. Uh, for, this is for NFL, N- MLB, and NBA. Playoff wins since 2010. There are three. <laughs> there are. I feel like I'm in a high school classroom again. Here. Yeah. There are three teams. Shut up. Just read the question. There are three teams in each league that have not won a playoff game since 2010. Can you name them? So we'll start. We'll start with uh, NFL. Which three teams have not won a playoff game since 2010? Maybe the Browns. I'm gonna go with the, the Chargers. La- Did the Browns win with uh, Flacco last year? Browns won with Mayfield. Char- oh yeah, with with uh, with uh, they- Flacco as well. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go with Chargers. No, the Chargers. They won some games with Rivers. They made the AFC Championship game that one year. Since 2010, you said. Since 2010. Do you guys have a panic? I think it's a 2013. Oh, 2010. Bears are on there, 100. percent No, no, dude. The Bears. The Bears. Are the they Bears have on there? to be on. There. No, the Bears are not. Oh no, never mind. They won some playoff games in 2018. They won in 2011. Uh, they got to the championship yeah. in 2011. Yeah. Yeah. Or 2010, whatever that was. I'm trying to think. Vikings, maybe. I'm gonna say Vikings. Did the Vikings win? No, the when Vikings. Was the Vikings have. Yeah, because remember the the, they beat, the mini, they, beat, they beat the Saints, oh, the, mini, the Minneapolis right. Miracle or whatever. Mm-hmm. So I'm trying to think. It's no NFC North. Teams. It's not Cardinals because the Cardinals have beaten the Packers. Um, it's not Niners or Seahawks or what else? The Ram- it's not the Rams. I'm gonna go Raiders. Raiders is one of them. Yes. I'm gonna go. It's not Giants. I want to say Dolphins, Cowboys, but I know it's not the Dolphins. What other team? It could be. Command- I'm gonna go could be Redskins. Commanders. Commanders. Yeah. Commanders. Yes. All right. And, and then, then I'm gonna go New York Jets. No, because they they won during the Sanchez years. They won a couple. Damn. I didn't even think Sanchez was in the 2010s. I know that's insane to think about. He was like 2013, 20 yeah, yeah 2012, early 2010s. Yeah. Um, was it Dolphins? Can we get a hint? No, Dolphins. Is it the Dolphins? Are you, are you guessing the Dolphins or not? Yeah, nah, Dolphins. Nah, nah, don't do it. Don't do it. I'm going to guess Dolphins. It is the Dolphins. Oh, I'm going to read them back like and a forth. book. <laughs> That's, you know, because I remember we were talking about the Dolphins and how two has never thrown 30 touchdowns. Yeah. And I remember thinking like, oh, like, 
like, of course he's thrown 30. It just seems like the kind of offense yeah. where they would. But then it's like this, too. I'm like, in my head, think, I'm like, Dolphins. I think we might have done one where it was like the longest stretch without a playoff win. It's got to be Dolphins. Because I remember okay. you said Dolphins. I was shocked. Yeah. Okay, next we're moving on. Uh, we'll do MLB. Three teams haven't won a playoff series since 2010. It's be a little tougher. You'll definitely have to help Tigers. Me out. No, because they made the, the World Series in like 2011 or 2012 around that time. They have one year out. Yeah, for real. They probably haven't won since. No, they, they, it's been a while since they've won one, but. I don't know. A's maybe? Angels. Angels, yep. Nice. Moneyball years. I feel like the A's were good in the 13s, 14s, so not them. I'm going to say Mariners. No, not the Mariners. I think they had a they had a pretty big drought. <laughs> Marlins. They did have a long playoff drought. But I think they won like one series in there. I really don't know. It's not Indians. Pirates, maybe. Maybe it's the Pirates. I don't know. I don't know. Think of did they have like one good year? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Um, the Reds, the Reds, yep. Oh, See, I was gonna say that, but I thought okay. like maybe they went on a couple runs. Yeah, so we have the Angels and the Reds. We need one more. Yeah, all right, Dalton. What do you got? I don't know. Yeah, Amer- American League. Okay, it's not the Blue Jays. I can't even think of all the teams. I know. <laughs> it's not the Mets. Well, it's, they're not American League. So. I know. I know. It's not the, <laughs> so it's it's not the, not the Mets. It's not the Yankees. It's not the Tigers. It's not the Yankees, not the Tigers, not the Blue Jays. Um, I don't know. Can we get a, another hint? Give us the division. <laughs> um, let's... <laughs> let's you say that's going to give it away. Liam, I assure you it's not. No, don't. Um, give us the division. Well, they're well, I said, they're in Central Time Zone. <laughs> <laughs> it's not the Royals. Um, they're gonna be like way south. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I'll leave this one up to you. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, I do can't you, even do think give, of the give teams. Up? I have no idea. White Sox. Oh, oh, White Sox won it all in fifty or oh five, I think. Yep, with Scott Pudsednik. They Pudsednik. have been bad. They're really okay. bad this year, aren't they? Moving on, NBA. Which which three teams have won a playoff? Ooh. I guess. I, guess I, I think it's for. I think it's series. They have won Hornets. A series. Yeah, Hornets. Hornets have been really bad. Pistons and, yeah, under MJ. Pistons. Yep. Bro, okay. I'm. I'll leave the last name, name them all. Name them all. <laughs> Hornets. But see, I don't know anything about the NBA. I'm just thinking about just kidding, dog bad shite teams. teams. And then the Kings. Where's the list of all? Are you looking at the list? No, I'm not. Wow, you I swear to God. I swear. Three. I swear I'm not. You just went nice. Holy, hey, yo, dab me up for that one. <laughs> dab me up for that one. Please dab me up for that one. That was. Are you sure? That was just gap. You like? No, that was gap because I'm thinking about that teams that are That's just good. horrid. Of course, the the only one I get that no, I'm, I'm proud. Those of that. are That's like crazy. the three poverty teams wow. in the NBA for sure. Okay, um, we'll do one more. Sure, one more Damn. NFL one. Man, so, uh, fire man! I have, I have a list of m- m- seasons, three for three, baby. Most interceptions thrown in a season since 2010. NFL quarterbacks. Um, Jameis Winston. Three, we'll go top five. <laughs> Jameis yeah, Winston. Winston. Thirty course, for thirty, yeah. the perfect season. Winston is one. Pick six. Since on the last when? Throw. Since when? So it's most interceptions in a season since 2010. Oh, tw- single, I was going to say single Manning. Season. Damn, single season. Jameis Winston. Cutler. Um, Deshaun Kaiser threw 11 touchdowns and 22 interceptions. Yep, Kaiser, he's he is up there with twenty. I guess there's a, there's a bunch of guys at the top at twenty two. So yeah, we'll we'll take Deshaun it. Kaiser. Damn, the fact that I remember that. Yeah, eleven touchdowns, twenty two picks. That is ridiculous. so. I guess well, it, there's nine then because there's there's four there's top four and there's five guys with twenty two. So we have Deshaun Kaiser. We have um, uh, Jameis Winston. Mm-hmm. And then we're looking for what seven more? Seven more, yeah. Okay. Uh, there, there's one one guy with, that counted for two, so six more guys. Baker, does Baker throw a lot of picks? No, Baker doesn't throw that many picks. You're close. So he had 21. Oh, really? In 2019, yeah, when he first first came in the league. Oh, poor Baker. Um, this, this sort of says it, Bakery Mayfield. <laughs> I have him name this. 
<laughs> Who else throws a lot of Who picks? throws a lot of Bakery. picks? I can't even Bakery. think of a lot of QBs right Jay Cutler? No. Jay Cutler wasn't as bad as many people think he was. Yeah, he I just threw a lot of picks against the Packers. That's, yeah, that's, that's why. <laughs> I want to say Brett Favre, but I don't think Brett Favre was playing in 20... I don't know he was playing in 2010. I'll say it, Brett Favre. No, I think he was... <laughs> He was his last year, probably. He has some bad picks, but you know, he that that was more like two thousands. He was throwing like twenty four picks in a season. Just trying to is uh, Carr on there? Derek Carr. Which Carr? Uh, David or Derek? No, Derek. Neither. Matt Come Schaub. Neither. No. So all all that these are all these are twenty tens. None of them have been in the twenty twenties. So that's that's the hint here. Hmm. There's some there's some good quarterbacks on this list. Like, oh, Eli Manning. Yes. He's he has two. He had Tom Brady. No, but Breeze might be on there. No, Eli Manning at 27 and 23. Breeze didn't throw that many picks. Eli Manning, 27 picks in 2013, 25 picks in 2010. Holy shit. People That's think he's bad. a Hall of Famer. There's, I, there's, there's, I, there's no way I he's, know, a I, he's not Okay, he won two he's Super Bowls, but he's not a good <laughs> no, regular dude, season he was, quarterback. He's he always very had great in the teams. playoffs. Okay, yeah. so how many? So it's one, two, so we need three, six. Four, five, five more guys. Are they all like good names or no? Um, Matt Ryan. No, not Matt Ryan. No, two two of these guys are definitely like Pro Bowlers. Three of these guys are Pro Bowlers. Aaron Brooks. Is there no, any like really two. bad QBs on there? Um. Well, it's, well not ter- number two. Who's number not two? Great. Who's number two on the Raiders? I can't remember his name. Jamarcus Russell. He even played long there. enough. No. Yeah. no. From twenty ten on, you said. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's not Jamarcus Russell. Yeah, there's like some. There's a couple guys that have had like some pretty good playoff success on this list. Philip Rivers, Trubisky. No, no. Get playoff success. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. He did make the playoffs. I think like his first year. Did Maybe? he? No, I don't know. I, don't the pro, I think he made the Pro Bowl his first year. Mm, I, don't know. Um, I don't think so. As an I think he did. Yeah, that maybe that's why. Um, I don't know. I'm trying to think of QBs. Kirk, maybe. Could be Kirk. It could be, but I don't know. Not Kirk. So here, here are the seasons you got. 2011, 2013, 2013, 2011, 2010. So Cam Newton? Earlier 2000s. Yeah, I don't think he was no, in the league he yet. he didn't throw it that much. What do you mean? He went to the Super Bowl. And he wasn't in the league yet in 2015. Could in 2013? Like, could be like Kaepernick or... Yeah, 20 Kaepernick 30, wasn't... Kaepernick 2013, 2011, actually, 2010 are the years. Kaepernick was a good quarterback. I will stand on that hill to the day I die. Um. Yeah, but he fell off. Dan Orvlowski? No, he played long. Like full. He only ever full season full starter. Season. Stafford. That's a good guess, but no, that's that's a good guess actually. Is uh. Three, gonna... three of these guys are like guys that are like actually like good quarterbacks. Did one of them play for the Jaguars? No, no Jaguars. Okay. Hmm. Like these are like Pro Bowl guys on this list. It's not Rodgers. Would it be the other Manning? Peyton? Well, what other Manning would there be? <laughs> Archie? Archie? Peyton? I don't think Archie played in the 2010s. <laughs> no, not well, Peyton. Peyton. Let's, no, it's not Peyton. Um, I don't know. Give up? I'm just trying to think of QBs. It's mostly, well, there's, I don't, I don't know how else to like. Give hints here. Yeah, it's hard to. Uh, I don't think EJ Manuel. Any of them have uh, championships? Yes, yes. Two, two of these guys won Super Bowls. Joe Flacco. Yes. Ooh, <laughs> nice. He's and Jimmy. Garoppolo. I think Joe no, Flacco. Jimmy Garoppolo. Joe Joe Flacco is the only one on this list that's active. I'm pretty sure. I don't think Garoppolo. Has and there's one. one more that won a Super Bowl. Well, Garoppolo mm-hmm. might have a Super. Ben Bowl. Roethlisberger. No, that's a good guess though. Who the hell won a Super Bowl? I'm trying to think of like Eagles QBs. Oh, Romo. Mm-mm. No Romo. Romo never won a Super Bowl. I know. I, I was just thinking yeah. of another name. Oh, I see. I thought Romo was like Nick Foles always threw picks. Oh, I know. I was thinking. That. I was he didn't to throw a lot of, of picks though. You, Romo I mean, it wasn't terrible. Was, yeah. No. Yeah. Um, I give up. I personally okay. give up. So, yeah, we got James Winston at the top, Eli Manning with 27, Eli Manning with 25, Ryan Fitzpatrick. Oh, man. 23, 23, 23, 23 picks in 2011, Deshaun Kaiser with 22, Joe Flacco with 22 in 2013, Carson Palmer 
Cool. You know what's funny is I was, picks I was thinking, I was honestly got thinking Carson, Carson Palmer. I yeah. Say it. Uh, what team was he on? The, the Bengals. Bengals. No, he's with the, All the, the, the Cardinals. 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 Josh Freeman. That's a tough one. Oh my god. Totally Josh Freeman. The Buccaneers. The Bucks. Oh totally my god. Forgot. And then a guy you guys were, were mentioning, Drew Brees. Really? 22 picks in That's my fault. I said he didn't have that many picks. You would think? I, yeah, I guess yeah. He, he had like I one knew or two like down one or two years, years he yeah. like had a really bad year. Yeah. That's funny. Well, Dalton, do you have any trivia? I think that's I not mean, on the spot. We kinda, it's been a while. Uh, I don't have any trivia so. either. So. That's well, okay. Well, I, I saved some stuff for next week, so we're not just like using it all. All right, who, awesome. are, the, who are the Bucks picking in two hours? Oh, yeah. It's, uh, what do you think about the draft being over two days? I, th- I don't like that. That's so that's lame. Dumb. It's not yeah. like the second round is like super rounds, exciting. Yeah. It's different than that second round of the NFL. Yeah, I want I want to say that they'll take Philip Kowski, but I don't think that they're smart enough. I I, want, I was looking at the list of the the their, their recent first round picks, and it's pretty bad. like Marjan Bochamp, Dante Divincenzo, DJ Wilson, Thon Maker, Rashad Vaughn. Like those are the guys that they didn't trade away yeah. in like the last ten years, and it's it's bleak. They had better in the second round, but I don't indeed. Know, maybe, I think I don't think they'll take a big man. That's just I'm gonna my, say we get Furphy. That's my guess. Furphy. So we'll I think see. he's I think he's going off the, bur- the board like right we'll away. S- we'll see. I, don't know. I think they're gonna take like Cam Christie of Minnesota, which is not a terrible pick, but Good not guess. a guy I would like, especially after getting another like guard that scores. For sure. But, Absolutely. All right, so we're gonna wrap things up. We will see you guys next week on the MKE Sports Express. In what many call the rebuilding year in Green Bay, after all this. It was all about the future, right? Well, for this Packers team, on this day in Green Bay, the future is now, and so are the playoffs.